Here in Austin, Texas, the sun has already set on the Longhorns' chances of being a national or Big 12 conference title contender. Texas fans are stunned and glum over their team's sudden and unexpected slide from national runner-up last season to Big 12 cellar dweller today. Mac Brown's proud program is struggling to get its swagger back. Right now we're struggling. It's our confidence. I got to get back. Get the guy to get that head back. Uh, these ball games, but you, uh, uh, when you're struck, when you find out who. Mike Gundy knows who his Oklahoma State Cowboys are. They're the number 10 team in the country, led by OSU's latest version of the triplets. Quarterback Brandon Whedon leads the nation with 26 touchdown passes. Justin Blackman is the national leader in receiving yards per game. And Kendall Hunter is third in the nation in rushing. Tonight, the Cowboys hope they have reason to cheer their first win at Texas since 1944. everybody to Saturday Night Football presented by Southwest Airlines. Tonight it's number 10 Oklahoma State with a record of 8 and 1 against unranked Texas which comes into this one at 4 and 5 in the 25 head to head meetings between these two teams. It's the first time Oklahoma State is the higher ranked team. And if you judged it based on preseason prognostications, you'd think that these Big 12 South standings are upside down right now. Oklahoma State is alone atop the standings at 4-1 and one in conference play, while Texas is in last place at 2-4 and four in the league and 4-5 and five overall. Hi, everybody, and welcome to Austin. I'm Sean McDonough along with Matt Millen. We'll be joined shortly by Heather Cox. Delighted to have you with us. Oklahoma State, one of the real pleasant surprises in college football this year. In most of those preseason predictions, Matt, they were picked to be fifth or last in the Big 12 South. But here they are in first to control of their own destiny in league play because of one of the best offenses in the country. Yeah, and, and they were a surprise to everybody except, except for this team. And, and I think the leader of this whole thing, Mike Gundy knew he had something early when Brandon Whedon the quarterback walked into his office and says I want to play and so when he was able to do that he put together a trio of guys Blackman and Hunter as you can see right there have just been playing spectacular football they've been playing solid defense and their offensive line is unheralded but these three they lead the way. Well, they've been a pleasant surprise. Texas, perhaps the biggest disappointment this year in college football at the beginning of the season, a top five in the country team, and now here they are just trying to get a win. They've lost five of the last six for a variety of reasons. Yeah, we had the opportunity to watch this team earlier in the season, and I hate to tell you, but they've gotten a little bit worse. <laughs> now, they have gotten beat up, especially, especially in the offensive line, and Garrett Gilbert has taken his lumps. You know, just a week ago, he threw five picks, which was not the best way to play the game. But there's a silver lining in this, Sean, because even though the numbers weren't very good, he has gotten better. He's going to need help, however, from his offensive line, who has struggled, and they're going to have to get some big plays out of their defense. But if they're going to win, Garrett Gilbert will have to lead the way. Oklahoma State and Texas. The kickoff in just a few moments from Austin. John and Jesse will be back on pregame after this message from our AB station. Welcome to the Nissan Ship. Proud Heisman Trophy. John and Jesse. Welcome everyone to Times Square. We'll get out to your game in just a minute, but first of all, want to update the number one team in the nation in action, Oregon, and they are down. Shane Vereen with a touchdown here. Cal takes the lead. That's Shane Vereen's 16th touchdown. That's second best in the Pac-10 Conference. Auburn 
the number two team in the BCS. Cam Newton, all the controversy did not affect him today. Drops back the pass, finds Philip Lutzen Kirkin, second time in the game, and a Cam, blowout. Cam Newton becomes the eighth player in college football history to throw for 2,000 yards and rush for 1,000 yards in the same season. TCU actually had a tough game with San Diego State. Andy Dalton and Jeremy Curley, nine yards. Four touchdown passes for Andy Dalton, but the defense uncharacteristically gives up 307 yards in this game. We'll see how that affects him in the standings. Louisiana Monroe against LSU. Ron Brooks picks off Colton Browning and returns at 32 yards. This is the best defense in the SEC. They're giving up only 283 total yards per game. Big 12, Kansas State, Missouri, senior day, Memorial Stadium. Carson Kaufman gets sacked by Alden Smith. He coughs up the ball. Jack Quee Smith recovers and goes 53 yards. Alden Smith is last year's Big 12 Defensive Newcomer of the Year. Missouri has now beaten Kansas State five years in a row, and they stay alive in the Big 12 North Division race. Oklahoma trying to stay alive in the Big 12 South Division race, facing Texas Tech, and it was easy. Landry Jones to Ryan Broyles with a catch. Ryan Broyles in this game became Oklahoma's all-time leader in career receptions and career touchdown catches. They blow up 45 to 7 victory over Texas Tech. We'll see you at halftime. Enjoy the game. All right, thank you, John and Jesse. Welcome back, everybody, to Austin, Texas, as the Nissan pregame shift continues. The Longhorns have just now taken the field before what is expected to be a capacity crowd of more than 100,000. It'll be interesting to see if they all show up tonight, given the disappointing play of the Longhorns this season. They need to win two of their last three games of the regular season to become bowl eligible. This is the Nissan pre the kickoff next. Saturday Night Football on ABC. Brought to you by Buffalo Wild Wings. You have to be here. And AT&T. Rethink possible. Texas has dominated this rivalry. They've won the last 12. And overall, they're 22 and 2 against Oklahoma State. The Cowboys' last win was in 1997. That was the last time they played Texas when the Longhorns were not ranked. And their last win, their only win in Austin, came back in 1944. Down on the sidelines, here's Heather Cox. Sean, Mac Brown confirmed that the rumors swirling around Austin that Case McCoy will replace Garrett Gilbert at quarterback are absolutely false. Coach Brown is adamant that Gilbert is their guy, saying there's no set plan to use McCoy, saying if we did that, we send the message that we're giving up and looking ahead to next year, and that is not our message. Brown said Garrett gives his team the best chance to win because of his experience. But tonight, Sean, there's even more pressure at that position, considering the Longhorns are starting three freshmen on the O-line for the first time this season. Mac Brown has never lost to Oklahoma State Heather 12 and 0 all time against the Cowboys students trying to get fired up for this game but you can sense the lack of the same kind of sizzle you usually feel when you come into this stadium in anticipation of the opening kickoff Texas won the toss and deferred. Oklahoma State receives the kickoff from Justin Tucker and it goes out of bounds. Johnny Thomas let it go over the near sideline. So already a bad start to the night for Texas as Oklahoma State will begin at the 40 yard line. I'll be placed on the 30. First down. And not the way you want to start by giving them good field position at the 40 yard line. They're going to need all the help they can get. Here comes Oklahoma State on offense. Led by Brandon Whedon, the 27 year old from Edmond, Oklahoma, leading the nation in touchdown passes, tied with Dominique Davis of East Carolina. He spent five years in minor league baseball before coming to OSU. Looking to throw, stepping back as he threw, and it is almost intercepted. Intended for Justin Blackman. And broken up by Keenan Robinson, the linebacker who dropped into deep coverage. That is a fantastic play by Keenan Robinson. They were trying to isolate the receiver Blackman on the linebacker. And so by formation, they got it. And Robinson is able to track him down and able to force this in, in completion. Let's 
Spread offense for Oklahoma State, and they'll try to go at a quick tempo. Kendall Hunter bounces off tackles and almost has a first down. He got nine to the 49. Blake Gideon, the safety, made the stop. Here's Oklahoma State on offense. They're third in the country in total offense. Hunter, the great runner. Ward, primarily a blocker. And up front, the only player on that offensive line who had starting experience prior to this year is the right guard, Lane Taylor. Third down and one. Swing pass to Joseph Randall. There's a flag down. And Randall's down with a first down to the Longhorn 46 if the play stands. Tripped up by Blake Gideon. Greg Burks is our referee leading this Big 12 conference officiating Personal crew. Personal foul, shot block, number 74 of the offense. 15-yard penalty, third down. That's the center, Grant Garner. You know, Sean, you mentioned about this offensive line for the Oklahoma State Cowboys and all underclassmen. You're going to take a look right here, number 74. They're all underclassmen. To me, this is this is a surprise. You can see the chop right there once he comes down. The surprise for this team is this offensive line. This works very well together as a unit. On third and 16. Whedon steps into the throw and has a first down across midfield to Josh Cooper. Down at the 47 yard line of Texas. Another tackle for Blake Gideon. Just going to watch. Just very well done. And it, what it did, the route self confused the coverage. They tried to jump it back inside, and he was able to get back on the outside. But the whole thing was able to be done because that's good protection, Sean. Third and 16, they got 18, and now Hunter runs through a huge hole and has another first down. Down to the 36-yard line. Gideon another tackle, 12 yards on the play. Texas fifth in the nation in total defense in front of Johnson Randall, Okafor, and Acho, an All-American candidate. His younger brother, Emmanuel, one of the linebackers. Robinson having an outstanding year. Williams, Gideon, Scott, and Brown, the secondary. They're without Shockey Brown, a starting corner who broke his arm last week. Here's Joseph Randall with a flag now. Multiple flags fly. He's knocked across the boundary, a yard short of the first down by Keenan Robinson. Randall's a true freshman, one of 14 true freshmen who've played for Mike Gundy this year and played well. That's another reason they've been a pleasant surprise. They're getting terrific play from a number of true freshmen. Holding number 68 of the offense. 10 yards from the spot of the foul. First down. That's the right guard Lane Taylor. That's two penalties for 25 yards on this drive for the Cowboys. Well he's out in space and that's one of the toughest areas for an offensive lineman. And it's not some <laughs> it's kind of like a grab. I don't know if they call that but <laughs> call it that rather. First and 20. And a handoff to Hunter. Dragged down by Dravati Johnson who was a linebacker earlier in the year. They've moved him to defensive end. As Eddie Jones the former starter at that position really wasn't giving them all they wanted in run defense. Hunter third in the country in rushing behind LaMichael James and Denard Robinson. Second and 16. Whedon throws and has Blackman for a first down inside the 25 yard line. Mark him out of the 23. 18 yard gain first down Oklahoma State. There you go. That's the main reason right there. He has all kinds of time to throw and they're just sitting in the zone and Blackman runs to the hole. That's just pitch and catch. Texas has not been able to generate a consistent pass rush all year long. The best pass rusher is Sam Ocho. Not a particularly big guy. They rush four, don't get near Whedon. It's dumped off to Randall running room down the sideline. He has another first down. At the 11 yard line. This That's jo a 12 yard gain. This Joseph Randall kid, Sean, this kid is special. I mean, he has speed out of the backfield. And what he'll do eventually is he'll give them an option and create fits for the defense because he catches the ball as well as any receiver, runs very good routes, just learning that position overall. But they, they'll exploit defenses with him. He's their fourth leading receiver. He's gone out. Hunter is back in. And first and 10 from the 11, Hunter broke free from the grasp of Acho. 
Sam Ocho, that is, and he lunged ahead to about the seven. So it looked like it would be stopped to the line of scrimmage. Instead, it's a four-yard gain. And that just kind of typifies what's gone on with this Texas defense. They, they, they've missed tackles. They've made mistakes. They're a better player. That Sam Ocho is a good football player. In recent years, they've been one of the best rushing defenses in the country, but not so this year. Just 37th in the nation against the run. Second and six, Hunter. Again, bouncing off a pile. He was held to a one-yard gain by Dravanti Johnson. Blake Gideon up from his safety spot. What a difference in a year for Kendall Hunter. A year ago, he watched him, Sean. He got beat up, and then as the season went on, less and less effective. But, boy, he came out this season guns a-blazing. And what a difference you can see in him. And what the difference is, is he doesn't go down with the first hit. He was injured most of last year, missed five full games, had only one carry in their loss in Stillwater last year against Texas. Weeden on third and five, back of the end zone and too high for Josh Cooper. Kenny Vaccaro, Nickelback had the coverage, and so the field goal unit will come on. Mike Gundy has the best tandem of place kicker and punter in the country. His kicker is Dan Bailey. Senior from Mustang, Oklahoma, who is 18 out of 19 this season. Mark Yeri, the snapper, and Wes Harlan, the holder. The only miss was last week against Baylor. It was a shocker right before the end of the half when he missed a 31 yarder. He's the third leading scorer in the nation, and Bailey with a 23 yard field goal has Oklahoma State on the board. 3 0. Four and a half minutes gone by here in Austin, Texas. Joe Wickline, the offensive line coach, done a terrific job with that group. He had to be mostly pleased with that opening series as O'Lyman committed a couple of penalties, but they also did a good job blocking for the 11 play scoring drive, aided by the opening kickoff out of bounds by Justin Tucker of Texas. Dan Bailey, the 23 yard field goal. What a good giant job Wickline has done with that group, Sean. You know, they, there's only, like you said, there's only one guy returning, but boy, collectively, they are really good. They play well together, make very few mistakes. Talk about how good their kickers are. Quinn Sharp, who's their putter, kicks off, and he leads the nation in touchbacks with 43. This won't be a touchback. The freshman Mike Davis brought it out. One of the many problems Texas has had this year kickoff returns they are 118th in the nation and that one was a 23 yard return. Well here's Garrett Gilbert as Matt said he's taken a lot of the heat here in Austin for the poor play of the Longhorns 14 interceptions nine of those in the last three games only seven touchdown passes and completing under 59 percent. They're accustomed to Colt McCoy here the last four years who was about a 70 percent passer. And Cole McCoy also a Jordan Shipley and this is a receiving group that hasn't distinguished itself nor have the running backs. Bozzy Whittaker pulled down by Ori Lemon the middle linebacker and their leading tackler. Whittaker part of the running back by committee approach Davis their leading receiver with Kirkendall and Matthews the tight end Payton Kelly moves in as the starter left tackle for Kyle Hicks who had started 37 straight games but he is out with a concussion tonight so it's an all freshman left side of that offensive line Gilbert throws on the rollout caught by John Childs he's out of bounds at the 30 yard line about two and a half yards short of the first down Oklahoma State just 89th in the country in total defense, but good enough to be 8 and 1. Blatnick, Donaldson, Jarka, and Chinasa the front. Lewis is a true freshman and a great talent with Lemon and Gent, the linebackers. And in the secondary, Andrew McGee, a team high four interceptions with Thomas Martin and Brown. They've been susceptible to the pass, 113th in the country against the pass. Gilbert looked like he was going to run, dumped it off to Whitaker. Up the near sideline, he's out of bounds back at the 44 yard line. But it is a first down for Garrett Gilbert of the Longhorns, a 12 yard gain. Nice call by Greg Davis, the offensive coordinator. He gives Garrett Gilbert the option and he plays it perfectly. 
He gets Markel Martin up in the air and committed to him, and then he dumps it off to Whitaker underneath. There's Greg Davis, the offensive coordinator. He's been here with Mac Brown throughout Mac's stint as head coach. The well, Longhorns and Greg Davis is taking a lot of heat from Longhorn Nation as well. Garrett Gilbert has been encouraged to run more often in recent weeks, and he has obliged. He got them to the 50 for a pickup of about seven. Texas, 91st in the country in scoring. That, of course, is the most important number on offense. This is from a team that last year averaged 39.3 points per game, third in the country when they played for the national championship. Last year, they got a lot of help scoring from the defense and special teams. That hasn't happened this year. Fozzie Whitaker, about a yard short of the first down. The last year they had Matt 11 non offensive touchdowns touchdown scored by the defense or special teams that led the country this season only one a fumble return by Keenan Robinson against Rice quarterback sneak on third and a yard and it looked like Gilbert used his six foot four inch frame to get the first down and you know Sean when you watch the film of this Texas offense there are some things that you see we mentioned at the start at, at the start of this that there's a silver lining in this. I think Garrett Gilbert has gotten better. And the problem is, to me, is the offensive line. The offensive line gets no push. They, they, don't, put, they don't pass things off really well at times. They're very young. Um, and a lot of pressure goes back on the quarterback. And he's, he doesn't have the supporting cast that he had just a year, a year ago. Gilbert. Handed it off, faked the handoff, and then threw it to Mike Davis. Nice move to get away from Markel Martin. Now the ball's out, and Oklahoma State has it. It's a fumble. Ruled a fumble and a recovery by Sean Lewis, the freshman from Missouri City, Texas. They have nine natives of Texas starting on that Oklahoma State defense. Machete Jones knocked it out. That looked like it was on the way out before Davis hit the deck. Yeah, that's a fumble. That's on its way out, just like you said, Sean. And this is another thing that has plagued this Texas team. They just beat themselves, and you can't do it. And I don't care if you're a senior, freshman, it doesn't make a bit of difference. The at any out. level of it football. It looked like his left knee was close to being down, but I don't think it was down. Yeah, at any level of football, you can't, you can't beat yourself. Well, they're now minus 13 in turnover margin. And the replay booth is not going to stop it apparently so they felt it was obvious that it was a fumble and here comes we not swinging flag down completion to Isaiah Anderson and that's a first down to the Texas 34 there is a flag in the secondary the ninth catch of the year for the sophomore another Texan from Wichita Falls Isaiah Anderson holding number 18 of the defense penalties declined Result of the play, first down. That's Will Muschamp there on your right, the defensive coordinator for the Longhorns. And the he, I, it doesn't matter what he's going to call tonight, Sean. If he does not get a rush out of that front four, he's going to have to commit using linebackers or bringing people off the corner. And when he does, he's going to he's going to take a chance outside in matchup. 25-yard gain for the Cowboys. Mac Brown said it was important to get off to a good start. It was a bad omen from the very beginning when the kickoff went out of bounds to start the game. Looked like a busted play, and Whedon throws. Intercepted. Picked off by Kenny Vaccaro. Whedon had lots of time to throw this ball, but Vaccaro, heck, he looks like the intended receiver. Bo Bowling, number nine right there, had his back to Wheaton, and Vaccaro comes up with the pick. His first interception of the year, sophomore from Brownwood, Texas. Dana Holgerson, the offensive coordinator, talking with Wheaton, who just threw his 10th pick of the year. It's just the 12th takeaway by the Texas defense. They come out with some trickery. And the pass is caught by Kirkendall. He got flattened, but he held on. Fozzie Whitaker threw it to him. Big hit was delivered by Johnny Thomas. 
But Kirkendall made the catch and then paid the price. I want you to watch the quarterback right here. Watch Garrett Gilbert. He actually gets in the way and allows Whitaker to be able to make this throw. And what a job by Kirkendall to hold on to this thing. Because he's going to take one right smack in the kisser. Thomas hit him right square. Nice hit, nice catch. They're going to check to see if his feet were in bounds, Sean. Looked to me like they were. You ruling on the field was catch. Terry Turlington is the replay official tonight. One foot has to be down. He has to has, have control. There's the control. There's the foot in bounds, and there's a control through the catch. That's a catch. Yeah, that's a catch. There's control to begin with, and then his feet are down, so that's a catch right there. A nice job by Thomas to run through that thing, but Kirkendall, great concentration and a great job of holding on to it. You know, on the interception, I think that bull bowling. After further review, the ruling on the field is confirmed. First down, Texas. I think that Bull Bowling thought his quarterback was going to take off and run, so he started to block, and that's when he turned his back, and that's where the error came. Yeah, it was a play that looked like it was doomed from the start. Nice catch by Kirkendall. Texas shorthanded at the wide receiver position tonight. They're playing without Marquise Goodwin, their speedy wide receiver, third leading receiver for the year. He's in Lubbock, Texas tonight, attending the funeral of his grandmother, Billy Williams, who raised him. So no Marquise Goodwin tonight for Texas. Out of the gun, Garrett Gilbert, sophomore. Whitaker put his head down and advanced to the 47-yard line, tackled by Broderick Brown and Ori Lemon. This Oklahoma State defense they don't really have anybody that just jumps off and says wow but everybody does their job they play very well together as a unit they don't create any lanes they're very good at what they do they just don't have a guy who just dominates coordinated by the veteran Bill Young one of the best in the country Gilbert throws caught by Malcolm Williams and he was fighting for every inch caught it right near that first down marker got driven back but then he drove the defenders back to the yellow line and it looks like he has the first down some of these fans in this part of the world who think the Longhorns have quit Malcolm Williams says not so fast my friend <laughs> yeah, and Malcolm Williams is going to have to help his quarterback a little bit more you come down he's got to come back to the ball he waited on that and took a chance for the defender to be able to go through and, draw and uh, knock it away, but he does come down with the catch. Gilbert, good throw, moving to his left. John Childs again battling for every inch. He has a first down to the 35-yard line of Oklahoma State, tackled by Andrew McGee in an 11-yard game. Well, Greg Davis, the offensive coordinator, look, he knows his team as well as anybody, okay? In fact, he knows it better than everybody. But what he's got to be able to do is he's got to create some movement to help his offensive line, and then he knows that these receivers can sit down in the holes of the zone, and that's what they're doing. And right now, Gilbert's throwing the ball really well. He already had five first downs. Second straight possession, they've moved it. They turned it over in their first possession. Whitaker pushed across the boundary by Ori Lemon at the 31 yard line. Whitaker's their leading rusher for the year and came into tonight's game with only 299 yards rushing for the season. When your leading rusher for the year is 299, nine games in, that's not good. Not good. He's very near a first down. You know, shy of the 26 yard line Justin Jett weak side linebacker senior from Irving Texas made the tackle ironically they get some guys hurt and they go out but I think that they actually got better at the left guard spot I think this Trey Hopkins is a real player number 76 just a freshman has very good movement now he's going to get beat some because he's just learning on the job but physically I think he's a stud flag down and Cody Johnson is down short of the first down on third and one. There was a flag thrown by the official on the near sideline. 
right at the snap of the ball. Johnson their short yardage back. Got nothing. We will check out the flag. Justin Gent led the defense. The horns are clapping. Offsides, number 90 of the defense. Five yard penalty. It is first down. That's Hugo Chinasa. They said number 90. They don't have a number 90. That might be why Mike Gundy's perplexed. Oh, uh, yeah. Mike's done a terrific job. At Oklahoma State, his alma mater, but the next step is either a win over Texas or a win over Oklahoma. He's 0 and 5 against those two schools. They haven't played Oklahoma yet this year. They'll end the regular season with the Bedlam game. Malcolm Williams, a hard earned yard. Corey Lemon and Sean Lewis took him down. If you look at how Texas is trying to run at this Oklahoma State defense, they're trying to run at the edges. They don't have great confidence with getting any kind of push on the inside. And so Bill Young now will start to see if he starts to have anything with his corners or safeties coming down off those edges. And try to make your corners tackle. Generally not the best tacklers. Markel Martin still down on the field. So there's a timeout. Gives us a chance to check in with Robert Flores in our Times Square studio in New York. All right, Sean, here's a taste of what's going on on the ESPN family of networks. Battle for the SEC East title. Number 23, South Carolina, leading number 22, Florida, 12-7 right now on ESPN and ESPN3.com. Alabama leading Mississippi State on ESPN2. And Arkansas rolling up on UTEP on ESPNU. We'll be back to beautiful Austin, Texas with Sean and Matt right after this. Night football on ABC presented by Southwest Airlines. Find our fares online only at southwest.com. Ally Bank. To learn more, visit AlliedBank.com today. And the new Ford F-150. Visit BCSTailgate.com for your chance to win the ultimate tailgate F-150. Texas Longhorns, an underdog at home for the first time since 1999. They trail Markel Martin and Oklahoma State three to nothing here in the first quarter. Markel helped off the field. I wonder if it's the possibility of a concussion. They're asking him a bunch of questions over there. Texas driving second and nine at the OSU 20. Cowboys showing blitz. And they bring some pressure and it's Kirkendall pulled out of bounds by Broderick Brown. Nice play by the sophomore cornerback from Houston Texas. There are 64 players on the Oklahoma State team in their program from the state of Texas. More than half of their roster from Texas, and many of them, most of them, weren't recruited or offered by the Texas Longhorns, so they look forward to this battle. Oh, you can see all the chips on their shoulders from here. Blitz picked up. Garrett Gilbert throws and incomplete. Looking for Kirkendall. With Broderick Brown in coverage, and the field goal unit will come out for Texas. First incomplete pass for Garrett Gilbert. That's fabulous coverage right there by Brown. They watch the transition and now run underneath. The offensive player looks, you look. He used the sideline as his helper. An incomplete pass. A good bounce back. Start to this game by Garrett Gilbert. He threw five interceptions last week against K State, but he's been sharp so far tonight. Justin Tucker, another one of the best field goal kickers in the country. A 37 yarder to tie it. Cannon hasn't gotten a lot of use this year. Oklahoma State and Texas tied at three. Welcome back to Saturday Night Football presented by Southwest Airlines. Oklahoma State ranked number 10, 8-1 for the season, and Texas tied at three apiece as the Longhorns took advantage of a rare takeaway after the first career interception by Kenny Vaccaro, Mac Brown's team. 50 yards and 10 plays, and Justin Tucker kicked a 37-yard field goal. Now he kicks off. Short. Fielded by one of the up men. 
Return to the 37 yard line. Well, Texas started out 3 and 0 oh, as expected, but then it turned south with a stunning loss to UCLA. That dropped them to 3 and 1. They lost to Oklahoma, then beat Nebraska. They thought they were back on track, but then Iowa State came here and won for the first time. Baylor beat them for the first time since 1997. That was also here. And then last week at K State, 39 to 14 in the game when Kansas State passed for only nine yards through four passes. Garrett Gilbert threw five interceptions. It has been ugly. Kendall Hunter runs out of bounds near side of the field. And it, it has been ugly, Sean, but buried in all of that, and you mentioned it, was a, they beat number five ranked team in the country on the road against Nebraska. And they did think that they turned a little bit of the, the corner, but then they went right back and started falling apart. Brandon Whedon, 27 year old, oldest quarterback in the history of the Big 12, been married to Melanie for a year and a half. Hunter upended, short of the first down by about two and a half yards. Manuel Acho sent Hunter head over heels. Third down and two, less than two minutes to go. First quarter. Whedon hits the slant for a first down to Justin Blackman. With Curtis Brown in coverage. First down at the 48 of Texas. But Whedon knows he's man to man on the outside and Brown. So Blackman, did you see, you see at, at the start of that route, he widens in first and then comes back inside. The whole thing is just watching the balance and the feet of the corner. And once he commits, you break your, in, your inside. It's averaging 161 yards receiving per game, 36 more than anybody else in the country. This is Michael Harrison, talented freshman, tackled by Aaron Williams. That's eight more to the 40-yard line of the Longhorns. I know there are a lot of freshmen playing in the NCAA across the board, but I don't know if one team has more talented freshmen playing than Oklahoma State. 14 true freshmen that have played for them this year is the fifth most in the country. That's true freshmen. They've also had nine redshirt freshmen play. Bad pass too far out in front of the intended receiver Joseph Randall. And it's another third and two for Whedon and the Cowboys. Yeah, that was just a nice read there by Emmanuel Acho. And so Texas they're staying with their base group. And so when they when they take Randall and they motion him out, they're expecting the linebackers on the inside to be able to handle those things, which means they're staying in zone coverages. Quick pass to Randall. Good moves behind the line of scrimmage, and he got the first down by a yard. Tackled by Gravanti Johnson. And that's that's the kind of position that we were talking about earlier Sean because he has great receiving skills and he also has good run skills. Now that's a good job also of getting some blocks from your from your buddies to be able to let him dodge in and out but he picks it up. And his emergence has allowed them to limit the wear and tear on Kettle Hunter. Hunter carries for about five more for a while Kendall Hunter was a 25 carry a game kind of guy for Dana Holgerson. But last week when they annihilated Baylor in Stillwater, he only had to carry 16 times. Of course, part of that was because they had a huge lead. Holgerson's done a wonderful job for two years at Houston and a long stint at Texas Tech prior to that with Mike Leach. Good throw and a catch. It looked like Blackman was juggling it, but he held on while being wrestled to the ground by Curtis Brown. First and goal, Oklahoma State. The eight-yard line after a 24-yard gain. Third catch for Justin Blackman. And it takes us to the end of the first quarter. Oklahoma State and Texas tied at three. Every 
Sunday, the BCS Countdown Show reveals the exclusive BCS rankings. Be the first to know who's in the driver's seat and who's poised to be this year's BCS buster. Get ready, because there are going to be more teams falling. The BCS Countdown Show, tomorrow at 8.15 on ESPN. Of new BCS standings on that program tomorrow night. Here are this week's BCS standings brought to you by Discover Card. And right now, near the top, all the top teams are winning or have won. Oregon has just taken the lead at Cal. Auburn rallied today from 21 7 down at home to beat Georgia. TCU it ended up a tight game with San Diego State. Boise State won last night. LSU leads. Here, number 10, Oklahoma State, trying to take the lead. They had 159 yards of offense in that first quarter, but only three points. And now they nearly had nine points. But Justin Blackman dropped the ball in the end zone. He dropped a long one that would have been a touchdown pass last week against Baylor. Well, they will come back to him many times tonight because right now the Texas Longhorns have absolutely no answer for Justin Blackman. If they go man and they bail like that, he will eat them alive all night long. He's had at least there one touchdown reception in every game this season. Should have had another there. Now they give it off to Hunter, who's driven back after a short game to the six yard line. Emmanuel Acho, Keenan Robinson helped to drive him back. They are the best of friends. We met with them yesterday in the Longhorns offices. Together and uh, they had a very good time giving each other a hard time. What great, great young men, great personalities, fantastic football players, but those guys will be successes in life no matter what they do. Third down and goal. And a touchdown for Jeremy Smith. Excellent play call by Dana Holgerson and well executed by the Cowboys and they lead for the second time tonight. Dana Holgerson uses this formation quite often and what it does it allows you to get two blockers out in front. It's kind of like the old full full set backfield and they come out with it's kind of like an inverted wishbone but they get the two blockers out front and pull a guard. You have three guys on the edge. That's tough to stop. Fourth rushing touchdown of the year for Jeremy Smith, another freshman. He's a red shirt. Low extra point, and it is no good. Blocked at the line of scrimmage, and that is a stunning development. Bailey had never missed an extra point in his career. 182 out of 182 before that one is blocked. And the Oklahoma State record by a mile with consecutive PATs. His first career miss as a senior comes on a block. I'm Robert Flores with his Taco Bell studio update. Number one Oregon on the road facing Cal. Down 7-0 in the second quarter until Cliff Harris goes 64 yards for the punt return. They went for two and got it. And number one is leading just before halftime, 8-7. Sean. That's an excellent defense that they're facing tonight. Cal in the top 20 in the country in defense. Dan Bailey, that has to be crushing for him. You know he wanted to get through his entire career without missing an extra point, but a low kick blocked by Keiston Randall, and it's a six-point lead for Oklahoma State. It's a nice effort by Randall, but that one's completely on kick. That came off low. Quinn Sharp will kick off. National leader in touchbacks. That's his second kickoff of the night. Both have been run back. Mike Davis to the 23 yard line, tackled by Joe Mitchell. Let's take a look at tonight's Southwest Airlines playbook. And here's that formation that I was talking about. And so it's like an inverted wishbone. And what they'll do, they'll hand it right here, and then they lead. Now, Right here, he has first to show. And it happens to be Thomas. He cuts him, gets on the edge, and then the next one to show is taken by the remaining back, and then it's just the eyes of the running back. In this case, it's very good eyes, and it's six points. And the 
floating high snap back to Garrett Gilbert, but he was able to field it. And Cody Johnson got five, and we set it down to Heather Cox. Sean, you saw in the last defensive possession, Markel Martin went down. He got the wind knocked out of him. The good news, he's back out on the field. I talked to the athletic training staff who said they gave him a 10-minute timeline. Then they reevaluated him to make sure that he didn't show any symptoms. Very anxious to get back, guys. He's one of the many players on the squad from the state of Texas. On second and six, Gilbert throws it short. Cody Johnson ridden out of bounds by Justin Gent. The 30-yard line will bring up a third down and three. Well, the good news for the Texas Longhorns is that their offensive line is protecting Gilbert pretty well. They've not really gotten much pressure. Greg Davis has moved him around a little bit to create some things. But the Oklahoma State Cowboys have not gotten much push up inside against this offensive line. Texas two out of three on third down tonight. Pressure Gilbert hit as he throws and it's caught for a first down by James Kirkendall at the 41 yard line. James Thomas and Broderick Brown on the tackle for Oklahoma State. So if you're not getting there with three then bring bring your linebackers which was exactly what they do in Ori Lemon. Gets a hit inside, but Kirkendall with a great route. Just drove Brown back off the ball and came back to the football. Well done and a nice timely throw by Gilbert. And an excellent start by Garrett Gilbert off the disastrous performance last week when he threw five interceptions to tie the school record. At Kansas State, Whitaker smothered at the 45 yard line a gain of four Ori Lemon made the tackle another native Texan from the Houston area the seventh of eight children he's one of those few Cowboys who was recruited by Texas offered a scholarship by Texas but he fell in love with Oklahoma State when he visited and he's still looking as a senior for his first win over the Texas Longhorns I think he's a pretty good player 240 pounds runs very well the difference with him is he's pretty good in pass game. You can't fool him in play action. He had a knee injury last year. That really hurt them. Deflected pass, and that's been a huge problem for Gilbert. Six of his interceptions this season have been deflected either by the defense or off the hands of his own teammates and into the hands of a defender. Shane Jarka got a finger on that one. But one of the things that Garrett Gilbert is going to have to learn to do, he's going to have to learn to to just slide and manage the pocket a little bit better and, and create some passing lanes. Third down and six, 12 minutes to go till halftime. Oklahoma State leading nine to three. Flag stop the play. False start, number 70 of the offense. Five yard penalty, third down. Hayden Kelly who's gotten the start tonight. First start at left tackle Kyle Hicks who's out with a concussion. And Hayden Kelly and Garrett Gilbert have been playing together since about the third grade. Gilbert said yeah we played for a while as kids but then Kelly got a little too big and didn't make the weight sometimes in Pop Warner so for a while they weren't teammates because Kelly was too heavy. Gilbert zings one into traffic and it is caught short of the first down by a yard but another good catch by James Kirkendall with defenders on him. Johnny Thomas and Broderick Brown both in the area for Oklahoma State. Good protection that was a rope. That was a well thrown ball and Kirkendall is having himself a heck of a first half here. Just catching the ball under tight coverage. And on fourth and one, they're going to punt from midfield. Last week, Texas attempted a fake punt and a fake field goal, and neither one of them worked. Previous play is under further review. Ruling on the field is there's one short line of game. Well, perhaps they're checking the spot of the football. Yeah, he landed on top of the defender. There's the catch. There's a foot down. So that's a, so he so that that will be fine. But the 
You'd think they would Greg spot Burks it. Reference the spot of the ball, though. So yeah. I wonder if they're looking to see if they should have given Kirk and Dahl forward progress closer to that yellow line. Yeah, I think you're right, Sean, because when his foot comes down, the ball is back further than where they have it spotted right now. They spotted it on the other side of the 50, and when his foot came down, the ball was looked like in front of the 50. There's the catch. There's the foot. Ooh, that's close. Now I know Texas still has a lot to play for. They're trying to become bowl eligible for the 13th year in a row under Mac Brown. And they need to win two of their last three to do that. But are you surprised he's about to punt on fourth and one, given that they are four and five and they're going against the high scoring team that they're probably going to have to score with? Well, I think what he's probably thinking is that he'd rather he'd rather try to make them have to drive the length of the field than give them a short field. But you know, what was interesting with him, Sean, was when we had a chance to talk to him, and then we showed it at the beginning of the game when he said, "Listen, my job right now is to get some confidence back in this football team, and that is so important for any team at any level. And when you start to play with confidence." Then these are the type of things right here, like if it's fourth and short, you have the confidence to be able to go After for it. For the review, the receiver never got inbounds. Pass is incomplete. Fourth down from the 40. Please put the clock at 11.56. I'm missing that one. He had the catch, his foot came down, and then he landed on top of him, unless they said he didn't have control when his foot came down. That's the only way it could be. So here's the catch. A yeah, foot is down yes, right left there. Foot's down. Okay. And he had control. Well, I think they're saying he didn't have control of the ball when that foot was down, and then he was not on the ground. He was on top of a defender. That's the only thing it could and be. Then he slid out of bounds. That's when he first touched the ground. Hmm. Justin Tucker rugby style punt. And John Gold have split the punting duties just about right down the middle. And the official is still moving on the far sideline. <laughs> Justin Tiger said, hey, cut it off right there. Wow, he came a long way up. They're going to mark it at the 30-yard line. Just a 30-yard punt. Saturday Night Football on ABC, presented by Southwest Airlines. Find our fares online only at southwest.com. Nissan, proud partner of the Heisman Trophy. And Dr. Pepper, there's nothing like a pepper. We're back in Austin, Texas. Kind of a crowd of more than 100,000. Time for our Pacific Life game summary. And it's Oklahoma State leading 9 to 3, already 167 yards of total offense with nearly 12 minutes to go in the first half. Yeah, and for me, it's those passing yards and, and how they're handling Justin Blackman because they've tried to take some chances to get pressure and they've gone a little bit of man to man on the outside and they can't handle him. Oklahoma State leading 9 to 3. They're alone in first place in the Big 12 South. On first down, Joseph Randall, the true freshman. Now to the 33, he gained three. Sam Acho drove him back, and now some tempers are flaring. Oh, Lane Taylor got a little lathered up inside there. You know, and you're an offensive lineman, you have a chance to put somebody on your back, and you get them on your back, you like to leave them there. That's one of the bad habits offensive linemen have. Brandon Whedon throws deep on second and seven, looking for Blackman, and he has it. And off he goes for a touchdown. 67 yards. Well, we said Texas didn't have an answer to Justin Blackman, but the other half of that combination, Sean, is pretty darn good. This Brandon Weed, and that's as good a ball as you're going to throw in a deep ball 
Oh, that's good coverage, good catch, six points. And a great coverage would have been to knock it away, but Williams is right there with him, and Blackman comes down with it. Already a 100-yard receiving game for Blackman, the ninth 100-yard game in a row. He had been tied for the Oklahoma State record in that area with Hartley Dykes. Bailey's extra point good. Blackman has now had at least one catch of 29 yards or more in every game this year. Big playmaker makes another. Justin Blackman, the touchdown catch is 16th of the year. Their single season school record is 19 by Des Bryant in 2008. A lot of people are starting to compare Blackman to Des Bryant. Meanwhile, Brandon Whedon has just broken Josh Fields' single season passing yardage mark. He's up to 3,165 with 183 already tonight. And the touchdown pass is 27th of the season. Leading the nation. Quinn Sharp kicks off. Mike Davis takes an E, and the Horns will begin at the 20. After we look at tonight's good hands play brought to you by Allstate. Well, let's show you what Brandon Whedon was looking at, and it's man coverage out here. Here's a combination here. He's going to check him if he goes. He comes back outside, and then this is just a vertical route, and it's you just got to run with them. And now you track the ball. Williams tries to track the ball. Blackman does track the ball. Pretty good coverage. The Blackman just muscles through it and picks up six. That's a big time play. You know, Sean, you mentioned about comparing the comparisons to Des Bryant. Now, physically, he's not there yet because Des Bryant, he's a stud bolt. And this kid's on his <laughs> way. Cody Johnson stopped at the line of scrimmage. I'm interested to see if this crowd turns negative. As the horns have fallen behind again by 13 yards. Yeah, Blackman caught only 20 balls last year. And of course, they played most of the year without Des Bryant because of the suspension by the NCAA. But he was just kind of another guy. And in the offseason, worked really hard as conditioning in his game, came back a different player. And Mike Gundy agrees with you, Matt. He said he's not Des Bryant yet, but he might be next year if he keeps improving the way he has. Garrett Gilbert runs first down and more out to the 31 tripped up by Broderick Brown 11 yards first down Texas. And remember at the beginning we said there are some silver lining in this and one of them is with Garrett Gilbert and one of the big differences that we've seen from the middle of the season on is his ability to take off and run. They had to try to convince him to go ahead and do that and uh, and he's he's taken to it he's, and he's been very effective Sean. He had a career high 93 yards rushing last week at Kansas State. Ran for 71 at Nebraska, which really was, as you pointed out, the first game where they encouraged him to do that after a bye week. His pass too high for Kirkendall. And here's Heather Cox. Well, guys, Garrett Gilbert also had five picks that night at Kansas State, and so he sought solace and advice from his dad, a former NFL quarterback, Gail Gilbert, who tried to ease the pain by telling Garrett that he once threw six picks in a game, and that advice has continued throughout the week. His dad's message before the game, keep up the energy, remain positive, and be more vocal because your team needs you to step up and be a leader. And guys, I've watched him on the sideline tonight, certainly much more vocal in, than games in the past that I've seen this season. He says he's trying more and more to be a vocal leader. Gilbert runs again, gets swung out of bounds by Broderick Brown. I was very impressed by him yesterday. You know, they're in a part of the country where they love football. Oh, yeah. You're a Texas quarterback, you're in a bright spotlight. But perhaps because he grew up around it with his dad, he seems to have a very mature viewpoint as a first year starter and just a sophomore. Yeah, I think he's got good perspective, number one. And number two, I think he has a good sense of where his football team is and knows what his role has to be. There's a lot of pressure on this young man. And, and I think he's handling it very, very well. He grew up around here. He said he knew it was part of the deal when he signed on to be the Texas quarterback. Doesn't go well, you're going to take heat. And it's not going well at the moment. He swung down, sacked by Jamie Blatnick. All the way back of the 25 yard line a loss of seven. And watch him again Brent Mitchell right there at number 72. 
Blatnik's not going to beat him with speed. He's not going to beat him with power. He beats him with technique. He's able to get to that top shoulder. And once you have that shoulder and you're hip to hip, you win. Blatnik comes through with a big sack. Team leading fourth sack of the season. He's another Texas native. It's line to Texas. Justin Tucker to punt. Whoa. That never got about head high off the ground. A line <laughs> drive. It takes a great bounce. And it's down by Malcolm Williams at the 19 yard line. 56 yard punt. That's the lowest long punt I think I've ever seen. <laughs> With the win last week in Texas, Denny Hamlin's now taking over the points lead from Jimmy Johnson. Two races left in the tightest championship battle in Chase history. Does Hamlin have the four-time defending champ on the ropes to chase for the next Print Cup continues? The Cobalt Twos 500 at Phoenix tomorrow, 3 Eastern on ESPN. Jimmy Johnson going to Phoenix where he's done very well over the years. Won four of the last six races there. Of course, he switch pit crews with Jeff Gordon which was a very interesting development in the past week high throw from Whedon and Josh Cooper couldn't hang on that's going to be fun to watch as the chase winds to its close everybody who's led with two races to go has won it so that bodes well for Denny Hamlin but it's also the closest that it's ever been Hamlin's the guy though isn't he he would be the guy who would have the shot because and I don't, he's in first. I don't really. And that know, is an advantage. That, that generally <laughs> does. That tells you how much I follow that. But, but I don't know how many points you can make up. Because I'm just system. making this up as we go. <laughs> we'll tune in tomorrow and you can find out. Whedon throws short. And nothing doing after the catch. Blackman might have lost a yard with that move after the catch. Kenny Vaccaro made the tackle. John, right here at the eight minute mark, this is a big down for the Texas Longhorns. They have to get a stop to give themselves a chance to get back into this football game. Now you have them third and long. They've not had the answer to Blackman all night long. Let's see what Will Muschamp, the defensive coordinator, dials up. Third down and 10. Cowboys three out of five on third down. Texas rushes five and Whedon throws and it's caught by Bo Bowling for a first down. Out to the 32 yard line, 13 yards. Blake Gideon the tackle, first and 10 Oklahoma State. Well, what Muschamp did is he brought a blitz, which means he had man to man all the way around. And this little guy right here, Bo Bowling, number nine, well, he's fun to watch. That's a tough little sucker. He has really come on in recent weeks. Had his career high last week, 101 yards receiving against Baylor. Kendall Hunter follows it up with an 11-yard run for another first down. Blake Gideon, another tackle. Now this Bo Bowling, he's, he's kind of West Welker-like. Quick in the slot. He's got some great toughness. Not afraid to catch the ball inside. He'll try to, he'll try to be physical with you. He, he's fun to watch. I'm, I'm, uh, I'm a big fan of that one. He's really come on the last couple of weeks. Nine catches against Baylor and eight the week before that at K-State. Whedon throws. Caught by Josh Cooper, their other inside receiver. You mentioned Wes Welker. Dana Holgerson was at Texas Tech. Coach receivers, Coach Welker, Coach Danny Amendola, who's in the NFL now. And he said both Cooper and Bowling are those kind of guys. Yeah, and you can see it. As soon as you put the tape on, they just jump right out at you. You know, lost in all this throwing that's going on, this offensive line is protecting and doing a first-class job. Joseph Randall dropped for a loss at the 50-yard line by Keenan Robinson. He's been playing on a sore ankle. Junior out of Plano, Texas, was just 205 pounds when he got here. Well, he's beefed up to about 240. We're going to need that 240 pounds to get a little rush here. Weeden's not, he's been back there reading a book all day. He's reading Tolstoy. That's how good it is. Weeden, forced back, running for his life, lost the football. And it looks like the Cowboys have it. Back inside the 30. Alex Okafor poked it out. 
And Levy Adcock got it back. Well, they finally got their pressure. And it's Acho gets to the inside, forces them to be able to run, and then the ball's on the ground, and Sean, yet another fumble forced, and another one not recovered. And Mac Brown talked about that yesterday. They forced about the same number of fumbles as a year ago, and they're a great takeaway team, but they've only recovered six fumbles this year. Ball just hasn't seemed to bounce their way in one of those seasons when there's a million reasons why. They have not lived up to expectations. Another reason would be when you can't catch a punt with nobody within 10 yards of you, but that's what Adrian Phillips did on a 53 yard punt. Oh, you're killing me. <laughs> Brandon Whedon and Oklahoma State leading 16 to 3 as we look at the Aflac trivia question. Other than Texas and Oklahoma, what is the only other school that has ever won the Big 12 South? Big 12 first held a football championship game in 1996. It's been either Oklahoma, Texas, or one other school out of the Big 12 South every year. We want to know which is the other. After forcing a punt by Quinn Sharp. First and 10, Texas. On the end around, Mike Davis back to the line, and that's all. Well defended by Broderick Brown. And Darius Hart, a backup defensive end. You know, Sean, when you look at this Texas offense, there's, there's one thing that's glaringly missing, and that's a playmaker. They really, they don't have that. They don't have a Justin Blackman. And, and they're counting on a young quarterback to have to do everything. Their running game has not been strong. And in particular, their offensive lines not help them. So they need that playmaker to have, to emerge, and and they haven't to this point at all. Make the same action, and then Gilbert going deep has a man behind the defense, and it's too long for Malcolm Williams. He got behind three Oklahoma State Cowboys, but the pass was just a little bit too long. Well, the design was good, the protection was better. The route run is right where it has to be, and Gilbert misses a chance by overthrowing. And that's the big play that they're looking. That's what they need, Sean, right there. And that's a that's a, a tough one. It's a wasted opportunity. It makes you wonder. You know, there's the old adage that Texas doesn't recruit; they select. They can yes. pretty much pick who they want in this state with so much talent. Cody Johnson in third down and 10. It's nowhere near first down yardage. There is a flag down at the line of scrimmage. And here comes some boos now for the play calling. Caleb Levy and Justin Gent combined on the tackle. But you wonder about some of these recruiting services because I would say, you know, if they're getting among the best recruits in the country, who are those guys? Where's the talent? Who's yep. the guy you'd say, well, this guy's definitely going to have a Illegal big career in the NFL? On the offense. The penalties decline. Fourth down. For me, where it really shows up is in the offense and defensive lines. They don't really, defensively, they don't really have much size inside. And then um, on the offensive line, well, they're very young. Now, he has three freshmen starting. Um, they, they don't come off the ball very well. So, to me, that's where it starts. And then, like we said, we need, they need a guy uh, who's a big play guy. And that, that guy is not there. I think the Marquise Goodwin, I think he could do something. Of course, he's not here tonight attending the funeral of his grandmother. John Gold punts this time. Fair catch signaled by Cooper. And then had to chase it to the sideline. Out of bounds near the 42 yard line. Recovered his own muff. Sean McDonough, Matt Millen, Heather Cox. Our producers, Bo Garrett. Our director, Mike Roig, and our terrific crew. Delighted to have you with us for Saturday Night Football presented by Southwest Airlines. On first down, the swing pass to Joseph Randall. He gets stood up by Blake Gideon and Emmanuel Acho. Manuel Acho, very impressive. Boy, was he funny when we visited yesterday. Very good student. I said, I understand you're a 3.4 student. He says, 3.41. Yeah, exactly. 
<laughs> Just slightly more than his buddy. Keenan Robinson. Although when Sam Ocho, the older brother, walked in, Emmanuel and Keenan enjoyed giving Sam a hard time. Kendall Hunter to the 50, and then he's driven back, and again, it's the brothers Ocho. Sam and Emmanuel combining on the stop, and it was uh, wonderful to see how close they are. The affection they have for each other was obvious in the meeting yesterday. What a family. Their dad leads a mission to Nigeria every year, bring medical supplies much needed to remote villages in the Nigerian countryside. The brothers Acho told us, yes, they 10,000 people line up, walk for miles and miles away to come and get medical care that they need. Hunter on third down in a yard. Picks up the first down to the 48. Blake Gideon made the tackle. There are the Achos. Mr. and Mrs. Acho. For about 20 years now, they've been making that trip. Sonny and Christy involved in the mission work. They recruited the dad of the hunter, John Gold, to go over. He's an eye doctor, averaging about 12 cataract surgeries a day in Nigeria. Good pass by Whedon, the catch by Bowling. And with two minutes to go in the half, Oklahoma State is threatening again at the Texas 25-yard line, a gain of 23. Well, Whedon doesn't need an ophthalmologist because he can <laughs> see perfectly down the field. No pressure whatsoever. Just a hole in the middle of that defense. And that's Emmanuel Acho right there. He's had a knee problem in recent weeks and has fought his way through it. Just kind of landed kind of awkwardly. You know, the one thing about both those Acho kids is they both have great character. They have great toughness. They do things the right way. Mm -hmm. And they do it in the classroom. They do it off the field. Outstanding people, outstanding parents. It doesn't get much better than that. Sam Acho is one of 10 finalists for the Lowe's Senior Class Award. 10 finalists nationally. That's for outstanding performance in the community, the classroom, demonstration of character. He's one of 16 finalists for the Campbell Trophy, which is called the Academic Heisman, for outstanding student athlete work, outstanding room in the classroom, work in the classroom. He'll be honored at the big banquet at the Waldorf in New York in December. There's another first down catch. Bo Bowling taken out of bounds at the nine yard line. First and goal, Cowboys. Well, again, no pressure. Good job by the offensive line. So Whedon decides to go bowling. And here he is. This kid is a dynamic guy. When you put the tape on, you know, we mentioned it earlier. He just has an ability to find the hole. Gets open very easily. He's tough at the line of scrimmage. He's a strong guy. You might say that the Whedon rolled a strike to bowling. But I'm continue on your yes. train of thought. There's Kendall Hunter into the end zone. Touchdown, Oklahoma State. John, I can't tell if that's a great running effort or a very poor tackling effort. But we'll err to the side of the runner because Kendall Hunter ran. He just ran right through him. Nine yard touchdown run by Kendall Hunter. Another Texan from Tyler Texas the hometown of the former Longhorn legend still a Longhorn legend former Longhorn great Earl Campbell. The extra point up and good by Dan Bailey a minute 15 to go in the half Oklahoma State leads Texas 23 to 3. Kendall Hunter, the rushing touchdown, his 15th of the year, coming up 
at halftime. Stay tuned for John Saunders and Jesse Palmer. Their Capital One halftime report. All the scores and highlights from today's college football action. Hunter third in the nation in rushing touchdowns and more of the same for Mac Brown. You know this was the best offensive team the Longhorns have faced so far this year and Oklahoma State has played like it 23 points on the board before the half. They have no answer for that offensive line and they have no answer uh, really in the running game or Blackman on the outside. When Sharp kicks off for the Cowboys in the end zone and it'll be a touchback. National leading 44th of the year for Sharp. Here's Robert Flores in our Times Square studio in New York. Well, Sean, maybe this will make Longhorn fans feel better. Landry Jones is a nominee for an AT&T All-America Player of the Week. Five touchdowns, 316 yards as Oklahoma rolled Texas Tech 45 to 7. You can take part by texting vote to 345-345. That was a bad joke, I'm sorry. Yeah, yeah, Robert, I don't think that's going to go over well here in Texas. <laughs> Let's see if the Longhorns will be aggressive here. Down by 20, all three timeouts left, and the ball's dropped by Mike Davis. You know, Mac Brown's tried everything. He's yelled at his team. He's given them plenty of love. At a certain point, it just starts to feel like this is just one of those seasons that everything that can go wrong is going to go wrong regardless of what he does the coaching staff does players are trying practicing hard and Sean hails the catch and that little short passing game isn't working Justin Jett Broderick Brown made the tackle well it's not like Mac Brown woke up at the beginning of the season and forgot how to coach football. This is the same team and the same guy who just a year ago they were playing for the national championship and had every chance to win it. And and so you know there's a turnover and and they try to re you know regroup. There's some players here they just they're going to need a couple of playmakers. Third and eight Gilbert throws into traffic and it's intercepted. Andrew McGee his team leading fifth interception of the season. He tried to fit it into a really small window. He got some pressure from the top side right there. Trying to hit Giles inside number five. He's hit. That's a that's a nice pick McGee. McGee was right on top of it. A great anticipation, a great break on the ball by McGee. He's from McGee, Texas, spelled differently, M-A-G-E-E. -E. He told us it's about 45 minutes from Jackson, Mississippi. He was not highly recruited out of high school. As a matter of fact, he went to junior college for a couple of years to try to improve his prospects as a Division I player, and it paid off for him. Incomplete pass thrown by Whedon. He told us the best chances he had out of high school were Arkansas State, Nichols State. So he went to junior college, wound up at Oklahoma State. It worked out for him. Yeah, they um, that that's an incomplete. Watch his watch his left foot is out of bounds right there. And it bounced. A gutter ball. <laughs> He'll be here all week, right? Yes. <laughs> Two shows. Be good to the waitress. <laughs> 24 seconds to go. All three timeouts. Plenty of time left for Oklahoma State. They usually don't need a lot of time. Michael Harrison swung down in bounds. They'll need to use the timeout now. Good play by Curtis Brown to keep Harrison in bounds and get him on the field turf. Time to answer Time tonight's Aflac trivia State. question. Cue the duck. Affleck. Even he's a little slow tonight. <laughs> Beside Texas and Oklahoma, what is the only other school that has won the Big 12 South? And the answer is Texas A&M. Long time ago, boy, a quarterback changes turn their season around this year. They're a factor to win the Big 12 South this year. 
They have a big game next weekend with Nebraska down in College Station. Oklahoma State has never been to the Big 12 championship game. And that they have a great shot at it this year. And they can get past this hurdle tonight. Just two games left. And the big one that lurks the regular season finale with Oklahoma. Trying to get to nine and one for just the second time in school history. They have a great shot at it with a big lead here late in the half. On third and nine, Whedon throws short, and it's incomplete. Intended for bowling. Kenny Vaccaro broke it up. And the field goal team comes on. Dana Holgerson is hard to please. We've seen him <laughs> several times tonight. He's a demonstrative guy, yeah. isn't he? Quite agitated with Whedon. And he should be. I mean, all Whedon's done is thrown for 250 yards and a half. Yeah, what a stiff. <laughs> Dan Bailey, leading candidate for the Luke Rose Award, is the best kicker in the country. 45 yard field goal is good. And it's 26 to 3 with five seconds to go in the half. Brandon Whedon has been everything is advertised. And for those of you who don't know him, take a good look. He can make all the throws. He has a nice pocket presence. He sees the field very accurate, which is the most important thing. And oh, by the way, he's got a lot of time to throw. Well, Dana Holgerson says that Whedon is as accurate, has a strong an arm as any quarterback he's ever been around. He mentioned earlier he's a former minor league pitcher for five years, drafted out of high second round by the Yankees never got past high a ball Yankees Dodgers and Royals organizations and his fifth year his shoulder really started to hurt it was interesting we talked to him the other day he said when he throws the baseball today it still hurts his shoulder but it doesn't hurt him to throw a football it's a different throwing motion he said he basically can't throw a baseball anymore he was recruited by Oklahoma State lightly while he was in high school but he had made it pretty clear to football recruiters he was going to sign and play baseball. Malcolm Williams brings the kickoff back. Mike Gundy told us one day all of a sudden Whedon showed up in his office. There's Brandon's wife Melanie. Said he wanted to give up baseball, come play football. Okay. Whedon came as a walk on, waited behind Zach Robinson. And Zach Robinson was the quarterback. They were a spread offense team, but they had much more of that quarterback run game that you see all over the country now. Give Mike Gundy credit. He oh, knew yeah. Whedon was going to be the quarterback this year. He's not a runner. So he got away from the quarterback runs. Brought Holgerson in to put in a system that fits Brandon Whedon very well. I'd say that's worked out pretty well. I think that's great coaching. I think that's taken the head coach who was calling the plays a year ago. He said, listen, I know what we have. I'm going to step aside here. I'll be the head coach. Holgerson, you go ahead and put the offense in, put your offense in, and they are running it to perfection. On the run, Cody Johnson. And Oklahoma State had four players deep down the field in serious prevent defense. Mike Gundy has to be a leading candidate for National Coach of the Year honors with the job that he's done. 26 to 3 at the half. Here's Heather. Sean, thanks so much. Coach, you talked about building this team's confidence all week long. After this first half, how would you assess the level of confidence and attitude of your team? Oh, I thought they started well, Heather, but we gave up the big play, which really hurt us. And what we've got to learn to do is keep fighting here, and that's what we're going to do the second half. Oklahoma State's really good. This is the best Oklahoma State team I've seen. Whedon is unbelievable. He hasn't missed. We've got to get some more pressure on him. We've got to come up with some turnovers. We had some rhythm on offense. We've lost it all. So we've got to go back and restart the game. We can't throw it every time. We've got to go back and restart the game in the third quarter and try to get out and get a score and, and get our defense where they can get some balls knocked off uh, off their routes and, and try to get some tip balls for interceptions or knock some fumbles loose. We certainly appreciate your time, Coach. We'll let you get to it. That Always might classic. be the most honest assessment <laughs> I have ever heard. Let's go to John Saunders and Jesse Palmer in our New York studio, the Capital One Halftime Report. Watching ESPN College Football on ABC. Where you got it?
Welcome back to Saturday Night Football presented by Southwest Airlines. From Daryl K. Royal Texas Memorial Stadium at the half, 26 to 3 in favor of Oklahoma State. Matt, one statistical oddity in this 4 and 5 Texas season. They had outgained their opponents in every game this year despite being 4 and 5. Not so in that first half, Not more than 300 yards so of O for OSU. Bad. Yeah, and you know, if they're going to make their move this second half, it's going to have to happen by getting pressure on the quarterback, number one. And then they have to find somebody who's going to make a big play. When the opportunity is there, they have to be able to grab it. They didn't do it in the first half. They have to be able to do it in the second half. And for the Oklahoma State uh, Cowboys, all they have to do is just business as usual. Their offensive line has been protecting. They've been throwing a ball all over the place and running when they want. Make their move. Was that a play off the song we Thank heard? Thank you very make, much. Make your Thank move. Very you. nice. Blending. The music into the content of the commentary. <laughs> Emmys for all. Quinn Sharp's kickoff over the head of Mike Davis. Texas will start at the 20. We look at the Pacific Life game summary. Brandon Whedon has set the single season Oklahoma State passing mark with 250 yards in the first half to go over 3,100 for the season. Dustin Blackman having a typical night. Had 100 yards receiving every game this year. And Kennel Hunter chipped in with 69 yards rushing. Texas moved the ball their first couple of possessions, but then became stagnant. Mike Davis on the receiving end of a Garrett Gilbert pass. Sean Lewis, the tackle, 12 yards first down. Here's Heather. Sean, Mike Gundy's goal was to start fast in all three phases of the game. He feels that he did that, especially on defense, saying we played one of the best defensive halves of the entire season, especially how well we tackled in space. As far as offense goes, he said we've got to continue to play fast and most importantly, finish drives. We need seven. We can't settle for three once we get into the red zone. The defense is getting better and better week to week. Cody Johnson run down for a loss. Back at the 29 yard line by Ori Lemon. And he's a huge reason why that defense is getting better and better. He's been consistently outstanding week to week. Yeah, you can see him right there, number 41. And, and this is just a simple direct read. He sees it. And all it is is just find it, get to the ball. There's nobody he's not accounted for. Ori Lemon, if you let him go, he's going to make every tackle on the field. Loss of three. They showed blitz. They rushed four, and they still flushed Gilbert from the pocket. Nice run by Garrett Gilbert, and then he got chopped down on a big hit by Lemon at the 38-yard line. The crowd cheers as Gilbert bounces back up after a nine-yard gain. Again, this is Ori Lemon is just dropped in zone coverage. And he's sitting with his eyes back on the quarterback, and then he tracks him. And there's nowhere to go except through the quarterback, and he does that really well. Six tackles for Lemon. And Garrett Gilbert all the way, as Heather Cox mentioned at the top of the telecast. Some speculation locally that we might see Case McCoy at some point tonight. Pass from Mike Davis incomplete. There's Case McCoy, true freshman, the younger brother of the Texas legend Colt McCoy. He's off to a very nice start in his rookie year with the Cleveland Browns. But you got the sense when we spoke with Mac Brown and Greg Davis yesterday that the feeling is that Case McCoy really isn't ready, Not ready. to play. Yeah. I mean, that was. You know, kind of reading between the lines, he's he's not ready to go because they would have given him a shot. I mean, it, especially the way things have played out, um, and he's not ready. It's just that simple. Justin Tucker to punt. Another low bouncer. Josh Cooper got away from it, and it's downed by Malcolm Williams at the 18-yard line. Time for our Big 12 update brought to you by Dr. Pepper. Oklahoma State in control of its own destiny in the Big 12 South. If they win out, they will play the Big 12 North champion in the conference championship game. Texas has not finished in last place in a conference since 1956. They're in danger of having that happen this year.
There's Joseph Randall off and running and all the way out near midfield before he was run down by Keenan Robinson. Well the nice design is executed perfectly. The offensive linemen they're able to get out in front of that thing. They get blocks initially right there's a nice block. And then he just he's off to the races. 30 yard gain. 280 yards passing now for Brandon Whedon. And add to that total. Here's Blackman down at the 49 of Texas. Tripped up by Kenny Vaccaro. When you think of that history for Texas, they haven't finished in sole possession last place in their conference since 1956 when they were 0 and 6 in the Southwest Conference that year, 1 and 9 overall. The next season they brought in Daryl Royal as head coach. He lasted 20 years, won three national championships Not and 11 conference titles. In trouble, Kendall Hunter and taken down by Kenny Vaccaro. And when you look for bright spots in this Texas season, we broadcast three other games now. Kenny Vaccaro is a guy who does make plays for that Texas defense. Yeah, he he he's very good at keying and diagnosing, and he makes a decisive decision. He doesn't hesitate. He gets after things when he sees it, believes his eyes. I'm your good player. Will Muschamp hoping for a stop from this Texas defense. Mac Brown said before the year started, had a chance to be a great defense, maybe the best that he's had at Texas. He admitted yesterday it's only been good, not great. Whedon threw it away, so they hold there on third down and 13. And part of it, Matt, is they've had to defend the short field a lot because of the problems of the offense. But the reality is they just haven't played up to what they expected they would play as as a defense. Yeah, I think the biggest, the most glaring thing for me, Sean, is up front. They they don't have the great speed rusher, and they don't have big size in the middle. They're, they're kind of on the small side, and they need points at their back. Adrian Phillips, another fair catch. 40 yard putt from Quinn Sharp. Well, they're trying to stay positive on that Texas sideline. Down by 26 to 3. Tomorrow morning, 11 a.m. Eastern on ESPN. Join Chris Berman, Tom Jackson, Keyshawn Johnson, Mike Dick, and Chris Carter. For Sunday NFL Countdown, get all the news, the latest updates from stadiums around the league right up until kickoff. It's Sunday NFL Countdown presented by IBM tomorrow, 11 a.m. Eastern on ESPN. Some great topics tomorrow, including the uh, interesting sibling rivalry between the brothers Ryan, Rex, and Rob. Swing pass caught by Mike Davis. Tripped up at the 22 by Johnny Thomas. Here's Heather Cox. The Texas offense is without running back Fozzie Whitaker right now. He suffered a shoulder injury late in the first half. He has been cleared to play, but so far a coach's decision to hold him out, Sean. He does have his helmet on there. It's Cody Johnson again near the first down at the 25. Now the coaches talked yesterday, Matt. They don't want to get in a situation where they have to throw it 50 times. Last week, 59 times at Kansas State. But when you keep falling behind by 23 points, you really are not a good running team anyway. You have to keep throwing the ball. One point last week, they threw 22 straight passes. Gilbert gets the first down. Well, one of the things they talked about going into this game was they wanted to have some balance. And of course, the score dictates that you know you're going to have to throw the ball to get back into this thing. It's Greg Davis. Well, the balance is good. It's just the yardage and the point total that isn't there. Gilbert throwing deep, looking for Malcolm Williams, and Broderick Brown had the coverage, and Gilbert got dumped after the throw. I'll tell you one thing, Garrett Gilbert's a tough sucker now. He has he's been getting some he's been getting drilled. And, a cut and he's and he's run around with abandon because he knew he was going to get hit when he took off and run didn't chose not to slide. He stands right in here with a guy right on him. So this kid's a tough kid. Fozzie Whitaker as you can see is in there number twenty eight. Second and ten five minutes gone by second half. Whitaker caught the swing pass and he got hammered. 
I mean, when you can't stretch the field, the other team catches on to these little dink and dunk passes pretty quickly. Yeah, and then the thing that surprised me right now is their intermediate game is non-existent. You don't see anything at the seven to ten range. He's trying to push things down the field or dump it off underneath. Generally, your tight ends yeah. would be that guy. I don't. I don't know if they're really uh, comfortable with using that guy in this offense right now. Well, in the past, guys like Bo Scape and David Thomas and others, but their starting tight end Bear Matthews has nine catches all year. Gilbert pulls it down. Boy, he is taking a beating. Justin Gent and Broderick Brown hit him that time at the 30-yard line, about five yards shy of the first down. And they will punt. What would you say? Maybe a third of the hundred thousand who were here have left? Yeah, they're not the uh, most vociferous group right now, I would say. Little to cheer for, and a lot of them, it seems, decided to leave at halftime. The official attendance tonight was over 100,000. Fair catch made by Josh Cooper on the punt by John Gold. Saturday Night Football on ABC, presented by Southwest Airlines. Find our fares online only at southwest.com. Pacific Life, for insurance annuities and investments, choose Pacific Life, the power to help you succeed. And Chevrolet. Oklahoma State here in Austin looking for a piece of history since the start of the Big 12 Oklahoma State has never gone 4 and 0 against the South Division's Texas schools they've already defeated Texas A&M Texas Tech and Baylor with a win tonight against Texas they will complete the Texas sweep for the first time had a chance to it last year but Texas won up in Stillwater 41-14 Whedon out throwing and it's Justin Blackman again to the 43 yard line. Blackman's able to run the deeper routes and find the holes easily. Again, this offensive line is just dominating. Seven catches, 135 yards for Blackman. Kendall Hunter carried and Christian Scott tackled him after a one yard gain. Now this offensive line, Grant Garner, the center, and Rush 70, Lane Taylor 68, Adcock 73 on the right side, and Martinez, the left tackle. They've just given the quarterback all kinds of time to throw. After the play fake, here's Isaiah Anderson on the receiving end of the 49. Aaron Williams made the tackle. Brandon Whedon sometimes you take we're taking shots at him. You don't see anybody. He's just by himself. It's like seven on seven in practice. Lots of time to be able to throw. He can step and throw take his time pick his receiver. Read uh, you know war and peace. He's having a grand old time back there. Well, For a while this season he was reading war and peace back there and Dana Holgerson got very agitated with the former minor league pitcher. He told him it's not the pitching mound out there. You don't wait as long as you want to before you throw the ball. One more of a sense of urgency from Whedon, and he has received that from his quarterback as the years gone on. Threw it past Justin Blackman. It'll be fourth down, and Oklahoma State will punt. 304 yards for Whedon tonight. That's actually below his average, but he's likely to get it. He averages 331 per game. Think of all the award winners they could have. Quinn Sharp is certainly a leading candidate for. The Ray Guy Award, the best punter. Dan Bailey's a candidate for the Lou Groza Award as the best kicker. Mike Gundy, coach of the year. Blackman could be the Bolitnikoff Award winner. Hunter's up there for the Doak Walker Award as the running back. This week on Monday Night Football, Donovan McNabb gets a second chance against his former team as the Washington Redskins take on Michael Vick and the Philadelphia Eagles. Redskins, Eagles, Monday Night Football, 8.30 Eastern. On ESPN, Matt will be there for the coverage starting at 7 with Monday Night Countdown served by Applebee. Well, they beat him the first time out. 
and he has not been particularly sharp. However, these games, uh, this is going to be a great game. Michael Vick has been on fire, and, and Donovan McNabb is going to come back to redeem himself. It's been an interesting year for both of those teams. Cody Johnson tackled by Justin Gent after a gain of four. Questions about the kind of shape that Donovan McNabb is in and is he immersed in the offense and blah, 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 blah. Yeah, I think that was just a bunch of rhetoric. I think, uh, you know, reading the tea leaves from the outside, you'd say that Coach Shanahan was not very pleased with the things he was doing, whether it was his work ethic at practice or what it was. There was something that got under his skin. And that's, that's intended for Kirkendall and broken up by Broderick Brown. And as this defense gets better and better for Oklahoma State, you know, they, they've come from a long way because we mentioned the preseason expectations were so low. Some of the preseason publications picked them to win three games. Mike Gundy said, there's another group that thought we might get six. He said, I thought we were going to be a little better than that. He said, I thought with a good year, we'd be a seven or eight win team. They're already an eight win team. It's going to be nine after tonight unless this turns around. But they came from a long way in the terms of the polls and they are the lowest ranked one loss team in the country number 10 in the BCS standings this week. But I think that they're going to get a little more respect at least from the human voters as they continue to perform at a high level week after week. Whitaker was tackled short of the first down. Well they've been dominant really here in every phase of the game and and they've they've kind of toyed with Texas. Now granted this isn't the same Texas team of a year ago but Either is this Oklahoma State team. This is a better Oklahoma State team. It's better up front on both sides of the ball. I believe the running game is better. Uh, and then I and the passing game is what's really impressive. I, I think I think this kid's doing a great job. Whedon is he's a pretty good player. John Gold punts it. Fair catch made by Josh Cooper. They're going to mark it at the 28 yard line. 47 yard punt. Here's another look at the BCS standings. Some competitive games at the top today. Auburn had a rally from two touchdowns down to beat Georgia. Oregon having a tussle at Cal, as many expected against a good defensive team. But if Oklahoma State's looking to move up so far today, nobody ahead of them has lost. And they'd need a lot of help to be able to even get in any kind of even a mention of being in the picture. One of the tests is going to be fun is that for them is going to be Oklahoma at the end of the year. Joseph ran a lot of running room after he caught it and then the ground closed by Blake Gideon and Curtis Brown. Brandon Whedon. Came as a walk on for a while the uh, Major League Baseball was paying his educational expenses. He said, but really now I'm leaning on my wife, Melanie. She's the one with the job. She works in HR for a dental chain, Ocean Dental. Matt's now going to have a free teeth cleaning. <laughs> <laughs> that unsolicited plug. Joseph Randall tackled short of the first down by about a yard, tripped up by Kenny Vaccaro. Brandon said he did save some of his bonus money and his salary that he made as the five years in the minor leagues riding the bus. And you wonder about an NFL future. He has said he is going to come back next year at age 28 to be a senior, but you view him as an NFL prospect based on what you've seen in Well, he certainly could make all the throws. He sees the field well. Um, you know, you don't see anything that says he can't make it. You just have to put an asterisk there with the age and see where he fits with that. He would be what 29 years old as a rookie. That'd be kind of tough. Mm -hmm. But certainly if you can throw the ball. They're hard to find. Mature Jeremy guy Smith carried for the first down. Yeah as a mature guy just just had a birthday. I think he's 27 Seven. years mm -hmm. old. I think of course his teammates call him grandpa and all the age related things you can give him. But he's throwing the ball like a whippersnapper. Ooh. Into the bag of tricks so far unsuccessfully and Whedon wisely throws it away. Here's Heather Cox 
Speaking of calling Brandon Whedon grandpa, he celebrated his birthday on October 24th. His teammates gave him a cane and a box of Depends. I talked to him about it before the game, and he said, hey, I was expecting a lot worse. I was actually pleasantly surprised. Now, guys, amazing how Mike Gundy got him. He actually just fell in his lap. He recruited Brandon out of high school, but Brandon made it clear he was going to play baseball. So coach never recruited him again, and then he just showed up one day in his office and said he wanted to walk on, and the best part was the Yankees were actually playing, paying for his school. Now Brandon on scholarship so he can join the team in scholarship-type activities, but that veteran leadership, that poise and demeanor, and maybe the cane and the depends certainly helping this team out <laughs> this year. Curtis Brown helped off. They lost Shockey Brown last week, a cornerback with a broken arm. Curtis Brown. Who Mike Gunny said might be the best cornerback that they've played this year, flexing his fingers. But Brandon Whedon was put on scholarship because if you're not on scholarship, you count as one of the 85. There are certain team related things that you can't participate in, like training table and that sort of thing. So Mike Gundy, once he knew Brandon was going to be the starting quarterback, wanted him to have access to everything that comes with being a scholarship player at Oklahoma State University. Well, he's been pretty much in control in this one, and he can thank us that offensive line of his. Second and ten, under four minutes to go, third quarter. And it's almost intercepted. Diving attempt by Kenny Vaccaro as he stepped in front of Justin Blackman. Well, Vaccaro is watching, he's watching Whedon the whole time. He's lined up in a slot, but watch his eyes go back inside. And now once he starts to see the throwing motion that's a great break and almost a great play The difference between a good play and a great play is the interception. He doesn't come down with it. Five tackles in his first career interception for Vaccaro tonight. He's also broken up a pass now third down and ten. Whedon throws caught near the first down yardage and it looks like Bo Bowling has it just shy of the 50. Keenan Robinson the tackle. But Oklahoma State converts on third down. Lots of time to throw and then Bowling just going to use his magic. You're going to watch him right here the inside man in that slot and it's against Keenan Robinson the linebacker. He's trying to take it away by body position but that's like stealing right there. Robinson's trying to hold the inside to not let him across the field. So Bowling just runs away from him. Four catches for Bowling. All of them have gained a first down for Oklahoma State. Now the deep ball, and it's incomplete. Isaiah Anderson couldn't hang on with Carrington Bindham, the true freshman in coverage for Texas. Well, that looked like that ball was right where it needed to be. Whedon has nice time to throw, and he hits Anderson in a bad spot. Right in the hands. <laughs> it's an accurate throw to a spot in the field where there's no help, and it's that's good decision, but it's bad execution. Whedon had a school record 34 completions and 435 yards last week against Baylor and had some drops in that game. Had a few drop tonight. Josh Cooper hung on to that one for another first down at the Texas 38 yard line. With just more than three minutes to go in the third quarter. This is what I like about Whedon right here. He can make all the throws. Now he's going to get some pressure and he feels it, but he still steps and throws, eyes are down the field, and the ball is right where it needs to be. The other thing I like about him, he's not afraid to throw to the inside of the field. Most younger players stay out of there. And this is his first time starting, but he's he's throwing with confidence. Screen to Kendall Hunter. Inside the 10, inside the 5, and fighting toward the end zone. They'll mark him down just shy of the goal line. Well executed screen. Hunter gets out in the open field, and then it's just run with your eyes. He gets some help with his friends out in the flat. Right there, Lane Taylor with a nice block, and then he's in. He just run with your eyes. Just, he's a strong runner. Mm. For a little guy, another guy from Texas, wasn't recruited by Texas. One of the assistants at Oklahoma State saw Hunter, told Mike Gundy he had to go look at him. Mike Gundy said he saw one play as he walked into the stadium, watched Hunter go on a long run and knew he was going to offer him a scholarship. Here's Hunter to the end zone, touchdown. That's that same double lead with Brian Ward 37 and Paulson 30.
Kendall Hunter just takes it right in. I'm sorry, that's Jeremy Smith, 31. It's just a matter of numbers. You get an overload of guys, and he just powers it in. Second rushing touchdown of the night for Kendall Hunter. And now Dan Bailey adds the extra point. 33 to 3. Late in the third quarter. Matt's been milling around again. Coming up, his thoughts on one of the greatest players in football history. One and only Tyler Rose. Dana Holgerson, the offensive coordinator, congratulating Kendall Hunter. He's a good offensive coordinator. It certainly helps to have a lot of weapons at your disposal. Hunter went to the right spot over to congratulate the offensive line. It's done great work tonight. The last scoring drive, 10 plays and 71 yards for Oklahoma State. They lead 33 to 3 on their way to winning here in Austin, Texas for the first time since 1944. They're 1 and 14. All time at Texas. Quinn Sharp kicks off. DJ Monroe from the goal line for the Longhorns. And he's down to the 24. Oh, we're mentioning Kendall Hunter is from Tyler, Texas, and he's a great back, but he's not the best back ever from Tyler, Texas, as we oh, mill around. Oh, no, yeah, and you get start to thinking about some of the great players who played college football and then also at the National Football League. And, you know, you get to thinking, I get milling around, and here's the guy from Tyler, Texas, the Tyler Rose, Earl Campbell, Heisman Trophy winner in 1977, and goes to the next level and just took the National Football League by storm. A powerful runner, a game changer, and one of the toughest and most physically just massive guys who you had to try to tackle. You know what? If your team struggling for offense, you should hope that we do mill it around because invariably we start to talk about <laughs> something. The team that's struggling makes a big play, and they just did. Garrett Gilbert to James Kirkendall for 46 yards. And that's a well-thrown ball, and Kirkendall is able to come down with it right to the middle of the field, and that's the big plays they're looking for. Just like they'd be, they'd be looking for this man right here. There he is, Earl Campbell. Led the NFL in rushing his first four years in the NFL. Ran for more than 9,400 yards as a pro. Cody Johnson carries near another first down for Texas. Earl Campbell. Remember he used to run. He had those big pads, the Donzas pads at the time. They were and they were kind of air filled, and he just looked larger than life. When you walked on the field, you're like, I have to try to tackle that. And he was. He ran so low and ran behind his pads so well. Just was a beast to try to tackle one of the greatest hits I've ever seen in any level of football was Earl Campbell against the Lake Jack uh, Jack Tatum. It was on the goal line and Tate came up and they met and it was like two bulls locking horns. Earl fell into the into the end zone for a touchdown and Tate fell the other way and talking to both those guys after about it. And they both said it was one of the it was a, just a huge moment. They knew what was going to happen and Earl felt fortunate to be able to fall into the end zone. He was built like a statue. He was a man 100 percent USDA. As Mike Gundy might say I'm a man says <laughs> Earl Campbell. Cody Johnson the ball carrier down to the 15 yard line. Was he the toughest running back to tackle that you ever played against. That's a great question. There are two. There were two who are that powerful. And then just combined speed and power. John Riggins was one, the diesel up in Washington, and Earl Campbell. And when Earl came to play, there was a lot of guys who didn't finish the game. <laughs> Final seconds of the third quarter. Texas looking for its first touchdown of the night. Cody Johnson remains the running back on second and eight. Garrett Gilbert, the play fake. Throws short of the end zone. But good for a first down to Malcolm Williams at the five on the final play of the third quarter. An 11 yard game. 
We head to the fourth quarter in Austin, Texas, 33 to 3 in favor of Oklahoma State. Back in Austin, Texas, home of some of the great nightlife in America, including at the Broken Spoke, where you can experience a true Texas honky tonk, as many of the members of our crew did last night without violating curfew. Voted the best country dance hall in America by Entertainment Magazine. Just one of the many great night spots here in a terrific city. Austin, Texas, capital of the great state of Texas. Well, Texas hasn't scored a touchdown in this ball game. Last time they won a whole game, well, that one was 2004, and they were shut out by Oklahoma. They have just a field goal tonight, but they're threatening first and goal at the five. Garrett Gilbert under center. Cody Johnson made it just across the line, and that's all. Tripped up by Chris Donaldson, a defensive tackle senior out of Anderson, South Carolina. Sean, whenever the, the limited success that Texas has had tonight has come on the arm of Garrett Gilbert. And if they're going to do anything here, they're going to have to throw to get it in. He's 15 out of 25 for 140 yards passing. They have just 246 yards of offense tonight. Cody Johnson powers his way into the end zone. Touchdown, Texas. Well, that's a, just a nice good powerful run and he just runs right over a la Earl Campbell over Ori Lemon mm. just right behind his pads just never stopped kept his feet moving and got in left lemon with a sour taste in his mouth but a fifth rushing touchdown of the season for Cody Johnson Five yard touchdown run extra point good by Justin Tucker. Seven plays, 77 yards and they have a touchdown early in the fourth quarter. Cody Johnson is 29th career rushing touchdown. He's eighth in Texas history in that category. First touchdown of the night for Texas. They're down 33 to 10. Some of the biggest comebacks in Texas history have been against Oklahoma State. The biggest comeback in Texas history was back in 2004 when they rallied from 28 points down to win. Came from 19 back in 05 against Oklahoma State and from 21 down in 07 to beat the Cowboys. So there have been some excruciating losses for Oklahoma State. But a much more potent Texas offensive team in those years than this one is. Here's Justin Gilbert. He has terrific speed. Return one 93 yards for a score last week against Baylor. He got stopped at the 30 there by Jamison Berryhill. Well, with his week last week in Texas, Denny Hamlin has taken over the points lead from Jimmy Johnson. Just two races left. Tightest battle ever in the chase history. Does Hamlin have the defending champion four times the defending champion on the ropes? We'll find out tomorrow. Chase for the NASCAR Sprint Cup continuing. The Cobalt Tools 500 at Phoenix, 3 Eastern time on ESPN. Brandon Whedon in trouble, got it off, and it is caught for a big gainer. Up the far sideline and into Texas territory at the 39-yard line. Tracy Moore the catch 29 yard game well, Sam Acho got the pressure state but I'll tell you Whedon kept his eyes look at him look at his eyes down the field the whole time knows he has a guy is able to get it off and just a nice throw and a big completion first catch of the night for Moore they're going a little deeper down the depth chart at some positions now Kendall Hunter look at Whedon out there looking like he won the block. I don't think he actually blocked anybody but he ran some interference. He okey doked him. He gave him that little I'm going to block you. Oh no I'm not. 14 yard gain for Hunter. Kenny Vaccaro swung him out of bounds. I don't think Mike Gundy and Dana Holgerson would like to see Whedon get injured trying to block downfield in a 23 point game in the fourth quarter. Now watch right there he kind of gave the fake like he was going to get Emmanuel Lacho and then pulled off on him.
Hunter again inside the 25 tackled by Keenan Robinson. In the first half they couldn't stop Justin Blackman in the second half they really haven't tried to go after him. They are just they've scorched this Texas defense really any way they wanted to Sean. Whedon letting the play clock run down now with the big lead here in the fourth quarter. Throws over the middle caught by Justin Blackman and then ruled incomplete. Could not hang on. Working in the hole in the zone. And that's that's one he should have had. He's had a couple of drops. Yeah. In a couple of weeks in a row, he had a big drop last week against Baylor. Huge numbers again tonight, huge numbers for the season. They would be even bigger. He missed one game against Kansas State after a DWI arrest. He was suspended for a game. That might cost him a chance at some records that he might have set, but won't because he missed a game. Blackman pulled out of bounds at the 22 yard line. Kenny Vaccaro there again. Just a sophomore is Blackman still developing and he'll he'll get thicker. He'll get a, he'll be a more proficient route runner and he's pretty good already. He does do a nice job of catching the ball away from his body. And these uh, are uncharacteristic these these drops that he's had but like I said just o only a sophomore he's he's going to be a good one. There's Dan Bailey to try a 39 yard field goal. Ooh. He's had a bad night by his standards. Missed his first career extra point. And that's just a second field goal miss of the year. Wide right from 39 yards. Looks like he pushed it. And it stayed there. Well, Holgerson disappointed. Might go have another energy drink. We've seen him have oh, at least two Red Bulls he, over there on the sidelines. He's side been knocking tonight. those bad boys back all night long. I guess the game isn't exciting enough for him. He's going to be awake till Tuesday if he has <laughs> one more of those things. He's high energy anyway without the help. Oh, Gilbert steps up and throws on the run. Low throw. Was it caught? No. Intended for Mike Davis. Came up short. Looks like it bounced to Mike Davis. Ooh, I'm not sure about that. Looks like he, oh, there it came out. He did get his hands under it. Didn't make a clean catch. He pops it up and then it comes back down. And they're going to review it. Looks like he got his hands under it, came up to his chest, and then it Previous kind of bounced on the second review. part. Ruling on the field was incomplete pass. We mentioned a couple of things that Oklahoma State's hoping to accomplish. This season under Mike Gundy, the chance to sweep the four Texas schools in the Big 12 South if they win tonight. First time they've done that since Big 12 play began. Here's another look at the replay. Earlier this year, Matt, they won at Texas Tech for the first time since 1944. They won at Kansas State for the first time since 1988. As you mentioned a couple times, win tonight would be their first in Austin since 1944 and just their second ever. They're having a chance to chase away a lot of demons that have haunted them over the years. What do you think after a number of reviews? Catch or no? That's really close. You know, the official who was standing right on it, he fell with his back to him, so he didn't make the call. So the official on the on the upper part of the sideline came down and, and, uh, and waved it off. But I still think he got his hands under it and it pushed it up, and then it may have rebounded to the ground. But you're going to have to have some indisputable evidence, and I don't know if you're going to get it out of these shots. Mac Brown, if it stays this way now, will be in a situation where his Texas team will have to win their last two games just to get to 500 After for the regular season. The 
ruling on the field stands. Second down. Not enough evidence to overturn it. But Texas has floored Atlantic, a non-league game that you would think that they would win, but the way it's going, can't take that for granted. And Mac said candidly yesterday, I thought we'd beat Iowa State and Baylor. And then they have the big game, rivalry game with Texas A&M, and that's a team that's played very well lately. Texas won eight of the last ten. Sean, the last time we saw this Texas team, they were beating the number five team in the country on the road against Nebraska. Nebraska. And they did, they played very, very well. Ball just thrown up for grabs by Gilbert. Tended for Deshaun Hales. Markel Martin there to help break it up. It, that's what Mac Brown said. People talking about, well, is the talent good enough? Maybe this just is an overrated Texas team from a talent standpoint. So if you're good enough to go to Nebraska and win, you have talent. So we can't use that as an excuse. But I think the reality that you just have to come to, Matt, is it's just not a very good football team for a, a lot of reasons. It's not any one thing. Yeah, there are is. deficiencies in a lot of areas with this Texas team. Bill Parcells used to say, you are what your record says you are. Exactly. And they're going to be a four and six team, and that's about what they have earned with their play this year. Robert yeah. Brown chased Garrett Gilbert out of bounds. But Good. not before he got a first down. As Mac Brown has had 20 straight winning seasons as a head coach and 18 straight bowl appearances. Those are in jeopardy as well. They got 162 weeks, weeks ranked in the AP poll. Three straight years in the top 10. That nine straight seasons of 10 wins or more is the second longest in the history of college football. Florida State. Back in its heyday at 14 straight years with 10 wins or more. That's already going to end. That was thrown right into the defensive lineman. Knocked down by Jamie Blatnick. The best Texas can do if this is a loss is win seven games. And they'd have to win out in the regular season to get to six and six. Get to a bowl game and win that one. Well it's a tall order for Texas. Uh, particularly uh, tonight. I mean they ran into a, they ran into a superior team. It's just that simple. I mean. The Oklahoma State Cowboys they have they have all the elements they have big play makers down the field they have an outstanding runner they have a good a really good quarterback who nobody really knows about they have an Ball underrated start. defense Number 70, the offense. and an offensive line Second down. sorry an offensive line that gives them time in both in all aspects of their offense. Mm. Well, Texas is just trying to get to 500 and be bowl eligible. What's left for Oklahoma State is a lot more important. They have a game next week that they should win. It's on the road, but they're at Kansas, a team that's had a very tough year. They'll be a big favorite to win that one. And then uh, it could all come down to the Bedlam series and the renewal of that great rivalry against Oklahoma. That's on November 27th in Stillwater. Oklahoma State wins out. They win the South and they go to the Big 12 championship game for the first time ever. Johnson pulled down by Cooper Bassett, short of a first down. Stay tuned after our game tonight for your late local news on most of these ABC stations. Over on ESPN, you can catch Sports Center post game analysis of this game, as well as the rest of today's scores and highlights. That's after South Carolina and Florida. The battle for the SEC East Brown. Well, to me, if Oklahoma State is going to fulfill their goals, it's going to come on the back of that offensive line because they have played very, very well. Gilbert's pass deflected, and they finally get a deflection that goes their way, the Longhorns. There is a flag down, however, <laughs> and that's been a story of the season for Texas. Mike Davis caught it on the ricochet. Ran down to the 25 yard line of Oklahoma State, but there is a flag back at the Texas 42 yard line. It stands, it's a 36 yard game. They'll decline that. Defense pass refers number 10. <laughs> he, uh, he turned it off yes. because it was on. His mic was already on, he didn't realize it, and then he turned it off. It was more interesting when he kept it on, wasn't it? Markel Martin guilty of the pass interference. Uh, he hit there him it is. Yeah, he hit him before he got there. 
And Mike Davis was glad he did. Johnny on the spot, picks up 36. A little score here would make it interesting, a touchdown, but it's Gilbert sacked back at the 33-yard line by Ori Lemon. Lemon's played himself a pretty good game here tonight. And they've brought him a number of times on pressure. He's come late that time on a delay blitz. Is just grabs a hold of him because and it's a it's a big play because Mike Davis had gotten beyond the secondary and was wide open in the end zone. Corey Lemon native Texan turned down Texas to go play at Oklahoma State and as a senior kind of beat the Longhorns for the first time he has played a big part in this game with 11 tackles tonight. Cody Johnson up the middle. When Ori Lemon was getting the sack, this is what happened with Mike Davis. He just got beyond everybody, and that would have been six. Davis, four catches tonight. He has set the single season reception record for a Texas freshman with 42 catches, breaking the mark held by B.J. Johnson, who caught 41 passes back in the 2000 season. Third and 12 Longhorns nine minutes to go. Staring at their sixth loss in their last seven games. Gilbert pulls it down and runs across the 20 first down and shoved out of bounds inside the 10 nine yard line the spot Lori Lemon ran him out first and goal 18 about, yard game. Yeah, How about right in the middle he does this little change of pace right there kind of slows up and then takes off again. That's Justin Gent. He gave that little okie doke to and picked up the first down. He was rushed for 50, thrown for 187. Corey Johnson drives down near the six yard line. Cody Johnson's a powerful man, isn't he? They were looking for that type at the beginning of the season, and they've they've had their troubles with the running backs. But I think he's answered one of the one of the questions that they had if they had that power guy. Cody Johnson, as we saw earlier when, when he ran over Ori Lemon, the middle linebacker for, for Oklahoma State, he's got that power. Runs behind his pads. Played tonight without Trey Newton, a running back who's out with a concussion. Gilbert after the play fake. Inside the two, lowered his shoulder. And got near the one yard line. Garrett Gilbert, he's he's poured everything out on the field here tonight, Sean. He's taken off and run. He's kept his eyes down the field when he can. He's kind of run for his life a couple times, but he's I thought he's played pretty well. Remember a week ago, five picks. Sometimes you go through those things. Third and goal, they put in a fullback, Ryan Robertson to lead the way for Cody Johnson. He's chopped down short of the goal line. Markel Martin up from his safety spot. Shane Jarka in there at the bottom of the pile. It'll be fourth and goal and Johnson was a little slow to get up. Yeah, he's going to be limping off. But you want to talk about one tough sucker. That's Shane Jarka, number 46. Good, good job of staying low. He just penetrates and forces this. Watch him get through right there. Ooh, he gets a leg on it. And the handoff goes to Ryan Robertson, and he scores for Texas. So with Johnson, their short yardage specialist banged up a little bit, and over on the sideline, they gave it to Robertson, just his third carry of the year, and it's his first touchdown for the sophomore from Brenham, Texas. And the extra point will take it to a two-score game shot. Three scores. No, two scores. It's interesting. They're going to go for two. 
And as you said, if they kick it, makes it a 16-point game, that's two scores. I mean, that's two eights. Right. But if you go for two now and you don't get it, it's a three-score game. So they are going for two with six and a half to go. Gilbert to the goal line, and he's short. Shane Jarka stopped him just short of the goal line. Looked like when he took off running, he was going to make it, but that Oklahoma State defense closed the ground very quickly. And that's a big stop because it remains a three score game. And he was down shy of the goal line. Six and a half to go. 33 16 for the Cowboys. night football on ABC presented by Southwest Airlines find our fares online only at southwest.com Buffalo Wild Wings you have to be here and Liberty Mutual Insurance responsibility what's your policy let's take a look at our Pacific Life game summary Texas with touchdowns on consecutive possessions Trying to make a game of it because they went for two, though, and didn't get it. They're still down by three scores. Big night for Whedon, just 34 yards shy of the single-game Oklahoma State passing record that he set last week against Baylor. Blackman, 187 yards receiving, improving on his nation-leading receiving per game average. And let's see if they onside kick Justin Tucker. Cowboys are expecting it. Here's Justin Gilbert as they kicked it deep to the 15. And he brought it back to the 31. I must admit, Matt, I still don't understand. We talked about it as they were lining up to go for two. If you kick the extra point, it's a two-score game. If you go for two and you don't make it, which is what happened, it's a three-score game. Yeah, I'm with you on this one. I and right from the start, was, I don't know why you're doing that. You needed to kick it, and then you get to two scores, and you're still going to have to try for the two-point conversion after that. But right now, you you just put yourself where you have to score three times and stop them. And the six and a half minutes to go against this high-powered bunch. No onside kick either. Kendall Hunter carried for a yard and a half. Will Muschamp leading this Texas defense. Yeah, now the clock is what you're trying to defend against here. And so at one point he's going to have to use, he's going to have to stop the clock. He's going to uh, talk about uh, Texas with Will Muschamp. And Whedon wisely letting the play clock run all the way down to about four when he took the snap. Now he takes off running. A little late in going into the head first dive, so he took a hit from Keenan Robinson. And that one smarted Whedon a little wobbly getting up. Yeah, that's a that's a mistake for Whedon. Whedon, hey, guy's been playing baseball. He should know how to slide. That uh, was not the you don't want to do the big rose head first slide. Going to go feet first there. Keenan Robinson's that's perfectly legal. Third down and five. A little screen to Blackman. First down and a big one for Oklahoma State with five minutes to go. They move the chains. Yeah, that's going to get Blackman. Up to nine catches for the night. They tried to come. They tried to get the pressure off that right side, but Will Muschamp sees it before anything because they came back inside with that screen and Blackman picks up the first. We've talked about Des Bryant and how Mike Gundy said maybe next year if Blackman continues to improve, he might be in the same category as Des Bryant. Dana Holgerson coached a long time at Texas Tech and he said the guy Blackman reminds him of is Michael Crabtree. Similar size similar skill sets. They both believe they're the best guy on the field and most often they are. Kendall Hunter pulled down there is a flag down on a long run. Looked like they might have grabbed him by the face mask but the flag was thrown away from where the tackle was made. 
23 yard Holy run. Number 25 of the offense. 10 yards from the spot of the foul. First down. Josh Cooper guilty of the hold, so it'll come back. You know, when I, when I you know, Des Bryant is physically, he's a genetic freak. Mm -hmm. I mean, he is, and he has tremendous run skills after the catch. And I think that's the step where Justin Blackman would have to take. He's a, Des Bryant's a real powerful guy. And uh, Blackman has the quicks, he has the hands, he runs the routes. He's going to mature physically and he'll get bigger, stronger. Um, the Crabtree's an interesting one. Crabtree's it, because that's a good player also. Mm hmm. Hunter again. To the 43 yard line of Texas. And a first down. He's a part time superhero and a dad. No, he's not Millen. Secret identity has been exposed. His fight for justice might jeopardize the lives of everyone he loves. Don't miss it all. New episode of the Super Powered Series, No Ordinary Family, Tuesday at 8, 7 Central on ABC. Dana Holgerson will still be awake for that one. <laughs> yeah. That's exactly right. And then. Hunter into the line. It stays this way. Oklahoma State will be 4 0 on the road this year, and they haven't won four road games in the same season since 1997. Kendall Hunter closing in on a 100 yard game. Yeah, this is a very well balanced Oklahoma State offense. I think offensively, they're about as good as any team we've seen this year. And the defense is getting better and better. Yep, I agree. I, th I think Bill Young's done a really good job with that defense. Remember, they brought him in a year ago, and they were kind of disgusted with the way their defense was going previous to him. And he came in, and he changed things around. And uh, I, think, I think he's done a fantastic job. Jeremy Smith knocked out of bounds, which they didn't want, at the 40-yard line. <laughs> You know, we talked at the top of the telecast about the latest version in Oklahoma State of the triplets. And they've all performed at a high level again tonight. Whedon 409, Hunter just shy of 100 rushing. Nine catches for 145 for Blackman. And those are those are the headliners. There are others. And that's that's what's so impressive about this team. And they're young. It's a young team. They got freshmen all over the place. And they got playmakers. Kendall Hunter stays on his feet. Another first down. Lake Gideon trying to wrestle him down, and Hunter refusing to go down gets to the 28. And you know, Sean, buried and all that is an under a full underclass. They have four juniors and one sophomore in that offensive line. They will be back, and they have gotten better as the year has gone on. And we talked about it at the top of the game. This is the group that plays collectively as good as any group that we've watched this, this year. They pass protect well. They're good to the second level into the linebackers. They're not bad out in space. This is a, this is a good young group. 526 yards of offense for Oklahoma State. That's just about an average night for them. Jeremy Smith the ball carrier. Texas hasn't been using its timeouts. The outcome really not in doubt. And with this victory, Oklahoma State has three consecutive nine win seasons for the first time ever. Be sure to stay tuned after the game. Robert Flores standing by. Scores and highlights from New York on the Ford wrap up show. I'll be, way, I'll, be, I'll be anxious to watch them play Oklahoma. That's going to be a good game. Yeah, they have to go to Kansas and take care of business next week. But Oklahoma State wins out. Balls on the ground. Jeremy Smith lost it. And Texas has it back with 44 seconds to go at the 22 yard line. Sam Ott recovered the fumble. Jeremy Smith still on the field. We'll come back to Austin right after this. 
Time now for tonight's big picture brought to you by Sony. Boise State a big winner last night at Idaho. How about Wisconsin today? Wow. 83 points, most by a Big Ten team since 1950. Auburn rallied from two touchdowns down. Another good statistical day for Cam Newton despite all the distractions. San Diego State rallied late but came up five points short at TCU. Congratulations to South Carolina. They win the SEC for the first time. And they win at Florida for the first time ever. They were 0-12. Yeah, Jeremy Smith helped off. He's a little wobbly. He took a hit in the helmet as he fumbled. Cody Johnson carries. A little strange, you would think, once it was obvious Texas wasn't going to use their timeouts, that Oklahoma State didn't just take a knee. Yeah, that's surprising. But this game is in the books. And congratulations to the old ball coach over there at South Carolina. That's a big win. Indeed it is. We have a chance to play for a conference title. South Carolina has only won one conference title in their history back in 1969 when they were in the ACC. Andrew McGee made the tackle on Mike Davis. Meanwhile, some bad history that Texas is going to try to avoid. The history of the AP poll. Only been six teams that finished the season ranked first or second in the final poll to then come back and have a losing record the next season. It hasn't happened in 34 years to Arizona State in 1975 and 76. If Texas loses one of its last two games, they'll be the first team to finish first or second in the poll and then go out and have a losing record the next year. And Oklahoma State, 9 and 1. In control of the Big 12 South. It looks like it's going to come down to their ball game in Stillwater against Oklahoma. And Mac Brown. Some appreciation for what a player Brandon Whedon is. I know Mike Gundy's happy to have him, and he's with Heather Cox. Coach Gundy, congratulations. The first time Oklahoma State has won in Austin since 1944. What kind of statement did this team make tonight? Well, I'm very proud of our football team. They've come a long ways, and uh, they practiced very well all week. And uh, there was a lot of talk about not winning here in a long time, a lot of talk about us not winning basically against Texas in a number of years. And they just stay focused. I'm really proud of them. What did you learn about your team tonight? Well, they've got a lot of character. And the, the, the assistant coaches do a tremendous job in, in preparing our young men to play in a game. And they're tough. They play physical football. And I'm very proud of them. Now, I know this is looking ahead, but Oklahoma State has never been to the Big 12 championship game. Is this team where it needs to be to make history this year? Well, I think Oklahoma State's in good shape. But we have to worry more about preparing for Kansas. Um, we have a good football team, but we're not good enough to look beyond one day of practice. Always one game at a time for coaches. Thank you. Sean? He's done an outstanding job. You know, his team is now 5-1 and one in conference, 9-1 and one overall. And in control of their destiny in the Big 12 South. It's starting to get more and more attention now nationally with that 9-1 and one overall record. They balanced. Offensive squad, the Oklahoma State Cowboys. They win tonight 33 to 16. Now for Matt Millen, Heather Cox, and our entire ABC crew. Sean McDonough saying so long from Austin, Texas. Stay tuned for the Ford wrap up right after this word from our ABC stations.